G'day everyone, my name is Jeremy and welcome to SEP on YouTube. Um, in this tutorial I just want to show you some cool motion graphics using SEP uh, and the fluid to attribute array node and the copier node and um, some kind of nice little distortion effects there um, using SEP. So let me just show you the setup. So um, to start off with, I've just kind of created a, uh, using the text tool, just um, some text, you know, it's just one mesh. And uh, to start off with, I'm just going to create um, a Moai Fluid just to surround that, that text. So it's going to be approximately 40 across, I'll make that 35, and kind of center it inside the text there, and just above my plane shape. I'm going to increase the base resolution to about 100, and just to speed up speed up the simulation rate a little bit, I'm just going to increase it to 1.5, so it's a little bit faster fluid there. I'm going to go and delete the emitter that comes with it, and I'm going to add my own emitters, a couple of volume emitters. Good emitter, sorry. Okay, so we've got two emitters now. I'm going to drop the fluid drop off right down to zero. I'm going to create them as volumes. And I'm just going to set the fluid color to dynamic. So red on that one. And then blue on that one. Turn them into a volume one. And then I'm just going to move them down to the bottom of the fluid. select it for some reason. So move it down and then I'm going to scale it to about approximately half the width of my fluid and just move it over to the left in this case. And this one I'm going to do the same thing and move it over to the right. A little bit bigger. That one can be a bit bigger as well. Okay, so if I push play, our container should fill up with fluid. Okay, I'm just going to increase the density emission on both emitters. And that should speed up the process a little bit. Okay, it's looking good. And I don't want any fluid to escape, so on my f fluid shape, I've just got boundary X and Y to both sides, so that means it's a kind of fully sealed fluid shape. So I'm just going to hide my emitters now, and I'm going to hide my soup shape. And I'm just going to make my workings, my um, view space, just a little bit bigger. Now from here, I'm just going to open up Node Editor so I can see my nodes. In fact, I just need to make it a little bit bigger here so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to graph my fluid into my working space and get rid of the stuff here that I don't need. To start off with, I just need to get the info, the two voxel info out of the fluid shape. So to do that, I'm just going to use Fluid Attribute to Array node. Fluid Attribute to Array. And to start off with, I'm just going to um, turn on position. Now I need my little cube shape. It's going to be my my instancing mesh. So let's create one of those. Little cube, and you kind of want it the same, about the same size as the voxels. Not important, but generally, the closer you get it, the easier it is to kind of uh, work with. So I'm just going to turn on. Uh, fall on the boundary draw and just get my cube kind of generally around about the same size as a voxel in there and then I'm just going to move it off to the side up here so I can get to it later on or in a sec and then turn off 
back to outline. So I've got my cube mesh, and I'm just going to pin those so it doesn't go all crazy on me. Okay, so now I'm going to create a copier node in soup. Just go to copier and create a copier node, and I'm also going to create a, another mesh object. So I'm just going to create another cube, and that one can just go over there. And I'm going to delete the history on it, and I'm just going to throw it at the end of the copier because the copier node needs an out mesh for it to draw the instancing objects. Okay, so here's our copier node. So what the copier also needs a instance object. So we're just going to use the mesh there. If I select that first in a copier, your uh, attribute editor will bring up the copier stuff, and then you can just add and it'll automatically set the transform node of that object, so we'll hide that now. So now we've got it pretty much all set up and ready to go to instance our object. So I'm just going to go straight into the copy node from the floor attribute to array and just go out position PV into pos array. And there we have our object. Uh, off centered a little bit, so I can't remember which our object is here. So I'm just going to go out uh, cube one, okay. So I'm just going to select that and translate that back. Which shouldn't really matter at all, so I don't know why I'm doing that. So I'm just going to lift it up again. Just select my fluid and see what's going on here. Hit the up arrow key so that it hasn't translated at all. So there is something, yeah, there's something missing with the copy node. It is not playing nicely. There we go. Sorry, that's my fault. Okay, so I had the mesh translated. So obviously it's going to uh, draw it where I moved it to. So that was a bit silly of me, but anyway, so there we go. Finally it works. Okay, so we kind of want the scale to um, be dictated by the density. So where there's no density, there's going to be no objects. So if we go back to our third attribute to array, and we click on density, and we're going to use um, a, an a array to array node. So basically what we're doing here is, because density is a single value array, we want it to be a, a vector array, which is what the copy of scale and scale will accept. So we need to convert that to a vector array. So that's really easy to do. So out density in array. And you'll see on the array to array that it's just ticked on as a vector array as it comes out. So the density will populate x, y, and z with the same value, which is what we want. And we can just go in here and stick it into the scale array. And because we're on frame one, we aren't getting any scaling. So as we push play, our cubes have been scaled where the density is and see as you can see not only is our um, scale way out of whack but um, the good thing is that we're not getting any mesh drawn in these spaces here where there is no density so uh, it's working but to control the, um, the scale rate what we can do before we use the array to array we can use a remap node so remap array so let's pump the density into there, that density in array, and then replace the fluid attribute rate with the remap. And if we go into the remap, we can just clamp it, and we can say maybe clamp it to 0 0.8, for example, okay, no, 0 0.5, 0 0.2. Yeah, there we go. So now we can see what we're doing. Push play. You can see 
see that the density is controlling the the scale of our objects. And we can probably go up a little bit bigger, so kind of almost touching. 0.35, 8.33. So, working so far, that's all cool. Now, uh, what about the color? So, if we just go to our fruit attribute to array and we turn on our color, and we feed our color into our copy node, so out RGB PV to RGB array, and we go into our copy node and we just want it to inherit vertex color. Let's just toggle toggle soft and hard edges, so we get kind of more of a flat look to our cube. And at the moment, you won't see anything because we just need to view colors on our mesh object, out object. So if we just go to mesh component display on it and display colors, and there you have it. We see our beautiful instance meshes and our fluid controlling the um, scale and the color and the placement of our instance objects. So, so far so good. So basically what we have here um, when it comes out of the copy of node is, is a mesh. So we can use that mesh as one single object rather than hundreds and hundreds of separate objects. And what we actually want to do is we want to kind of mask out our word. So the the cubes inside the word show up and everything outside the word gets deleted or disappears. And we can do that using a um, cage node in soup. So these are our text type mesh and these are our copy mesh. And so if we just get a cage node. We have a look at the input, so we want to input mesh and we want the cage mesh, so if we select our cage mesh and I just need to turn on my <coughs> actually I'll just get the connection editor going. So type mesh is world mesh into the in cage mesh and then we want the the copy out mesh just into the in mesh for cage node. Go and have a look at the cage node, there's not a whole lot there to uh, worry about. But what we do need to look at is what's been pumped out. So we've got our components is what we want to use here. So if we just create another mesh object just randomly. So, so if we just create a polyplane this time, just for argument's sake, get rid of our history on there. So that's going to be our resulting mesh. And what we basically want to use is a delete component node. So we'll just create one of those. And force the out components into the delete component node, delete components, and then of course the resulting geometry into the mesh and mesh, and you'll see that nothing's happened. <laughs> um, so we can basically, if we hide that, hide the suit mesh. And then hide that. Ah, okay, so we also need um, <coughs> so we've got our verts. So we need our input geometry as well. So input geometry from Let's try from our in mesh. Click components. So 
world mesh, input geometry, and voila, we have action. Okay, so essentially we have the effect that we're after based on the video I showed you in the beginning of the tutorial. So our cage mesh is deleting any components outside the, um, the cage uh, by uh, the mesh that's actually determining the cage. And you'll see that our word super starting to appear. And if we just turn on so we have all those off. If we just turn on, I'll turn that off. Timeline. And if I just turn on mesh component display, display our colors, you'll get to see the colors transfer from the fluid. So essentially that's the effect, um, and we can then create some nice distortion effect just using the attribute transfer node. Um, <clears throat> so let's create a bounding object, and if we just make that a cube, Scale it across, up, and just make sure it's covering the um, the mesh. And if we just pipe in the geometry, oops, geometry from the connection editor into the end geometry. And do the same for the attribute transfer out geometry to the in plane in mesh. And at the moment, you won't see anything happening. That's because we need to turn on position. And you'll see that we've got some sort of thing happening here. And if I just move this down, you can see that our attribute transfer node is distorting the position. And of course, we can just animate that, animate that up. For example, set a key there, and then at a hundred, just scale it up. Set key. So, as we do a quick play blast. Now fluid colour from the two volume emitters has been translated down the our network into our final mesh. So the colour's affecting per vertex and the density is also controlling the radius of our instanced objects objects and then we're using the cage node to delete the unwanted verts outside of the text, the soup text. And then we uh, pipe the final result through an attribute transfer node and use a bounding object just to distort the position of each vert to create the effect that we're, we wanted to achieve. So we'll just let this run and the words are, the letters have appeared and then I'm just moving, translating the bounding box, bounding object up at Y. And 
but of course if we throw in a light and some shadows and things we can have a lot more nicer effect. So it's thinking about it. Here we go. Yeah, so just put it on real speed. And there we have it. Our motion graphics super effects. So I hope you like that. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.